Sunday Sound Off with Frank Bull. Welcome back to Sunday Sound Off and our first hot topic of the night, Mondesi or someone else at second base. Sam, he looks overmatched. <laughs> he does. Offensively, you're talking about, right? T to me, the answer has always been uh, Cologne or Merrifield or even if you want to get a little crazy, Cuthbert, and then have Mondesi spend some time in Omaha and get some confidence back, some much-needed <laughs> confidence in his swing. That's always been the answer to me, even setting aside the fact that, you know, financially you can push back, potentially you can push back his free agency a year. Uh, that's always been the way uh, that, that I thought they should go. That being said, he did help them today. He had, he had that double play uh, where he tagged the guy and, 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 and made the throw over to first. He had the sack bunt. Um, that, that drove in a run. There was a ball in the hole there or behind second base that he could have done a better job with. But he did some good things today. But still, I, I think that, you know, if it was me, if it was up to me, and look, there's a million reasons it shouldn't be, um, I'd put him in Omaha to get some confidence and let one of those other guys play. Blair? I, I thought it was going to be Cologne, uh, the starting second baseman out of spring. A, a little bit surprised that it was Montesi. But I, but I understand it. The Royals have loved Raul Montesi. Uh, as long as they've had him. They put him on the World Series roster. Of course, they sent him up to the plate and won it bad. He struck out. But that's the, the Royals have shown all along how much they, they, they like him, they trust him, they, they want him to succeed. And I think that's what we're seeing now with this decision. They're willing to, to live with his mistakes the way they lived with Escobar's mistakes back uh, you know, five, six years ago, uh, hoping that, uh, that Montesi will develop into the superstar that they think he can be. Sir, in? Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, this is a difficult one for me because I, I do believe Ned Yost and Dayton Moore have earned our trust. You know, I spent a, a number of nights, as I know these guys did too, sitting out there at the ballpark at 11 o'clock asking Ned Yost, why is Alcides Escobar batting in these situations? Why aren't you pinch hitting for him? And those were the years 12 and 11 and 13 when they were leading up to becoming the team that would ultimately get there in 14. And Ned Yost said every time, we're getting him the experience he needs so that when we play big time games, he's going to be ready to. To deliver and boy did he I, I was at Baltimore when he hit the home run uh, in game one of the ALCS to, to help get him through uh, to the World Series in 14 so you know that ended up being right the, the problem there though is that was a time where we knew it was about building they were building to 14 15 you know it wasn't that year now they're supposed to be winning now and they seem to be doing the same thing with Raul Mondesi getting the experience that they want so he can be better two or three years from now when meanwhile everything that's been said about this team is that they're here to win now so I think they're trying to serve two masters and I think that very rarely if ever works all right we're going to switch gears here for a minute here's our second hot topic of the evening Mizzou signed Blake Harris today, and they are in on both Kevin Knox and Jeremiah Tillman. If they sign them all, how good can this team be? Blair. NCAA tournament good is the answer to the question. Look, just, see, just um, you know, Michael Porter Jr., I'd say Missouri would be a candidate to be maybe the, the third straight team to have a, a one and done, maybe the overall number one draft pick in the NBA whose team did not go to the NCAA tournament. Right. Uh, Markel Foles for Washington this year, Simmons for LSU the year before that, and maybe Porter next year. But with C.J. Roberts and, and, uh, and possibly Knox and Tillman and, and, uh, and Blake Harris joining the crowd, no, this absolutely has a chance to be a, a special Missouri basketball team. Think about this. Missouri went 8 and 24 this past year. They were 255 in the final RPI. Right now, with the three players that they have signed, they're number 16 in the, in the national recruiting rankings with a chance to move in behind maybe just Kentucky and UCLA into the top five. It'd be an amazing stretch for uh, for, for Conzo, Conzo Martin and, uh, and this Missouri Tigers basketball program. Surin? Well, it'd be great to see five freshmen, see if they put them out there the way Michigan did with the Fab Five because they'd be able to field a full team. Uh, if they got everybody, and it, it'd be pretty good. Look, I think right now I agree with Blair. I, I think when they just uh, had Porter Jr., that you were looking at a team that was probably on the outside looking in, and, and maybe he exceeds our expectations. Just being number one, and you know, the number one player in a class, Avery Bradley was the number one player in a class. He, you know, he wasn't the kind of guy that can lift a program. Is he going to be that kind of guy, or is he going to be the kind of guy that's, you know, Kevin Durant and can really raise a team up? And Kevin Durant, as Blair and I have talked about on my show before, hey, Kevin Durant had some help. He had DJ Augustine as well. Well, now you're getting that help around him. I think at this point, Missouri fans should be talking about feeling like they should be in the NCAA tournament. I think they'd be a bubble team, but I think you got a real good shot to get in. Add the next two pieces, and I think you're talking about Sweet 16 Elite 8 caliber team uh, and one that can really do some damage when they get there. It's also the kind of team that could have a nice regular season, get in there, and then get upset in the first round because of how young they are. But the overall talent that they would be throwing out there if they get them all, which is what your question was, is one that can go far in the NCAA tournament. Sam? 
Yeah, I guess I'm joining the chorus here. I mean, if they get all those guys, not just an NCAA tournament team, but I mean, a top 25 team throughout, you know, the the, the regular season, especially in the SEC, which I know is getting tougher. But and and I'm glad Seren said that about you know once you get in the tournament, who knows? But I think that's the kind of team that gets in the tournament and expects to win, you know, expects to get into the, the second weekend. And not just those freshmen, too. I mean, some, some of the guys that they're going to return, I think, like, look, they, they were the heart of a team that won eight games, right, uh, last year. But I think that they can be good players when they're the third, fourth, fifth, sixth best guys on the team. You know what I mean? Like, they, they can yeah. be better support guys if, if Michael Porter's putting in, you know, 18 to 25 or whatever game. And, and one more disclaimer, right? Like, I think I... I I think I am with everybody on this panel here. All I've seen of Michael Porter Jr. and Kevin Knox is the McDonald's All-American game, and all I've seen of any of the four are these mixtapes, and right. they, all, they all look amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that being said, like this is how college basketball is played. This is how college basketball is won and lost. So if they get all four of those guys, my goodness, I think that's an absolute top 20, top 25 team. I know one thing for sure. If they get in the NCAA tournament, they will be in KU's region no matter where it is, okay? That's all I know for sure. And our final hot topic, I said it was a wild card question. This quote from Bubba Watson after he missed the cut talking to a newspaper reporter. Golf is tough, but writing articles is easy. Seren, how long have we said this? Uh, I've said it forever. I mean, you know, look, being on TV, being on the radio, Got these it. are difficult we, gigs. Yeah. Writing <laughs> articles, though? What? Any schlep can do it. Any schlep. <laughs> Finally, somebody comes out and says what you and I, Frank, have always wanted to say. <laughs> That's right. These guys making, as they say, Lezak money, as we always say in here, you know? That is the problem. Okay, Sam, defend your trade. There's no question he's right. I'm <laughs> I, I, I'm invited on a TV program because of this. This is I, I am absolute proof of the, uh, the wisdom in that sentence, for sure. <laughs> Blair? Hell, I wrote two articles in a car coming in here tonight. So that's, that's how easy it is. You just, you just sort of said into the deal, right? Well, then Bubba did really come out and he said, hey, look, I'm sorry. I was upset. I think the guy asked me, he said, what makes this course, you know, so why, why didn't you make the cut? As if playing at Augusta National is like playing pitch and putt. He goes, hey, pal, playing golf is tough. These guys, you guys writing articles. You play golf? He asked me, you play golf? He said, no. He said, well, playing golf is tough, which it is. By the way, the Masters Day was just incredible. Really happy about Sergio Garcia. Yeah, it really, was a really good yeah. deal. It was incredible, and I'm happy that uh, Blair wore green in honor of it. Yeah, I, I saw, he even has uh, he, he has Greg Norman's shark. There right you go. Absolutely. Got it. All right. Up next, we get some final thoughts from the panel. It's their time to sound off on 